China has the largest number of state-owned enterprises in the world, over 150,000. These numbers in other countries, especially in the West, are way smaller, normally under double digits. If we look at the Fortune Global 500 list, 117 companies are from the Chinese mainland, and 91 of them are state-owned enterprises, or SOEs. Another 121 are from the United States, and none of them are government-owned. This is Bank of China, the country's most internationalized bank, and that one is oil refiner Sinopec, the country's biggest company. Most of the buildings along this street house companies that are one thing in common. They're all owned by the government. Why does China have so many SOEs? Before we dive into details, it's important to say that SOEs are not unique to China or an outgrowth of socialism. Many capitalistic countries have SOEs too, especially when it comes to controlling the national resources and public services. Saudi Aramco, USPS, and the French Railways are all state-owned. But China has taken it to a whole new level since the founding of the People's Republic of China in 1949. SOEs have played a pivotal role in the economy. For a period of time, the country was under a planned economy, which meant that almost all enterprises were entirely owned and controlled by the government. In other words, they were just like the government agencies. This remained the case until 1978, when China decided to reform and open up. At the time, the country instituted market characteristics to its economic system, calling it the socialist market economy. During the transformation, more and more people started to create their own businesses, and most of them finally got pretty rich. To some degree, the rise of the private sector has weakened the dominance of SOEs in China's overall economy. In the late 90s, China moved forward to downside the SOEs with a policy called grasping the large and letting the small go. It indicates the central government would maintain control over the larger SOEs, and the local government could restructure, privatize, or just shut down the smaller ones. Since then, the SOEs have also faced bankruptcy risks. It seemed the market got more and more competitive, but some scholars have suggested abandoning the SOEs due to their sloppy money usage and low efficiency. Much of them are linked to the government's strong backing. Even though critics say private businesses can take a bigger role in the national size projects, China believes that only the SOEs can take them all. For example, the country has many isolated villages, so the government said we don't want to see anyone left behind. It is in this area that the SOEs have a role to play because they have the capacity and backing to build public infrastructures aligned with the government and the people's needs. You need some state company, you know, to bear more risks. For a developing country, at least for a while, uh, they do do some good, I mean, to the, to the society. The debate over how to balance the relationship between SOEs and private companies is ongoing. But meanwhile, the government is pushing for reform, including the mixed ownership plan. Still, more discussions are expected in the future.